War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. 1984 is a book about a rebellion that fails and the rebel knows it's going to fail. It's the most famous dystopian novel, but it's also a thriller and a love story, and in times, a horror story. As Orwell knew, he didn't have the imagination of a great novelist. He was not very good at sort of conjuring things up. The texture of Airstrip One was inspired by London after the war, when they were still blitz damaged. The texture of the Ministry of Truth was based on his time working for the BBC. The destabilizing of the idea of truth had come to him when he fought in the Spanish Civil War and saw the news reports in many of the papers, particularly the Stalinist papers, just bore no resemblance to what he'd seen. Bingsop was basically a satirical exaggeration of totalitarianism, of things that Orwell had learned about Hitler's Germany and Stalin's Russia. So it is oppressive on multiple levels. If the thought police, um, that basically arrest people for things that they haven't even done yet. You have surveillance through the two-way telescreen. And then you have the most pernicious form of all, which is doublethink, which basically teaches people to believe two contradictory things and to have lost faith in objective truth. In Newspeak, the whole notion of goodness and badness will be covered by six words. There's a new form of language called Newspeak, which is designed to limit the range of thought, to rewrite history and to rewrite reality. We're not only inventing words, we're destroying them. Scores of thousands every day. He was identifying these pernicious habits in the way that we talk and which could lead democracies down a very dark path. If there's no word for freedom, how do you describe freedom? Surveillance is now at a level which is unimaginable in the world's time. The image of the two-way telescreen is so powerful and seems so prescient and the world didn't understand the technology, he didn't own a television set like most people in Britain at that time. But he knew that the desire to surveil people was, it was so powerful that whatever new technology came along, it was going to be used in that way. When the BBC uh, did the first televised version of 1984 in the, in the 1950s, it caused outrage and many viewers were horrified and scared. The director afterwards said one of the reasons was that people still weren't used to having televisions. And the idea of a big brother staring down the lens out of the television was really unnerving in you know, a drama which features the telescreen. It's just strange that that's what I'm doing now and it's perfectly normal and hopefully nobody is going to be terrified by me. Within a few years of the book coming out in the 1950s, people were talking about the double thing and the thought police and Big Brother. And obviously over time, that means that you get these very bizarre sort of travesties of, of, of the meaning. You know, the, the Big Brother TV series or the BBC TV series Room 101. When you do see these words, you go back to the text and go, well, what did he really mean by the thought police? It's not, as some people suggest, political correctness. It's a bit, bit worse than political correctness. There is so much in the book that different aspects of it come to the surface at different periods in history. So when it came out throughout the 1950s, it was seen as a study of totalitarianism and as a critique of Stalinism, which is true. But then as the Soviet Union began to weaken in the late 70s and in the 80s, people became far more interested in the technology which is not actually a huge part of the book, but they became fascinated that it was a warning against computer databases and closed circuit TV cameras. And what's happened recently, uh, people are going to it for what it says about truth and flagrant lies and the nature of exerting power by distorting reality. And for a book to have these sort of multiple meanings so that it seems relevant at very different times in history for different reasons, is remarkable and, and perhaps not something that he would have expected.